All right, we're here with Phil at Masterpiece Arms in just outside of Atlanta. Correct, yes. So what's the Masterpiece Arms story? Well, Masterpiece Arms was uh, started back in the late 90s by a gentleman by the name of Gary Poole. And he was a contract manufacturer for many firearms manufacturers, including um, uh, SWD and RPB Industries and, um, and a few of the other people that had manufactured Max. And when um, SWD went under, he decided to start Masterpiece Arms because he knew when the weapon designed the basic Mac, you know, when it had gone from an open bolt full auto to a uh, open bolt semi and then to a closed bolt, you know, having the weapon function in a closed bolt design needed some redesign. Needed some tweaks, right? Yeah, and and Sylvia and Wayne Daniels didn't want to, you know, they were more interested in just numbers rather than designing the product because they were selling a lot of, a lot of weapons, and so uh, he put some changes in place on the weapon that had a lot to do with uh, you know, the significantly better reliability of the MPA product over some of the other predecessors and, and started out uh, with just some of the basic top cockers in both 9mm and 45 and added in the side cocker scope mount that has the uh, pick rail mounted on the top of the receiver and developed the Mini 9 which is just a shorter version of the regular 9 that is more in line with the size of the um, M11 380 that they, that they made back uh, when Matt was manufacturing the weapon. And, um, but he, you know, he was doing very well with the company and back uh, in August of 2008 he decided that he wanted to go live at the beach. And, <laughs> uh, and so I'd known Gary for a number of years from, um, you know, he was a business friend of mine and, and we ended up buying the company from him. Okay. And, uh, but he still, he still is a part of the company on a, on a, on a consultant basis. Still does some things for us time to time whenever we run into a new design we're trying to achieve and get his input and design expertise. And you know, we're the company's been around since 1973, primarily as a parts manufacturer, uh, basically a big CNC machine shop. And um, considering the you know the the manufacturing technique that Gary had used in making most of the components himself, uh, it was it was a good fit, which is one of the reasons why we were able to buy the company from him that he felt good about the transition. Um, you know, our facility here, we've, we have 36, 37 CNC machines and, you know, have the ability to, and the expertise to be able to manufacture all the parts. And so, so we're doing everything in. Uh, we're doing everything here, uh, with obvious exceptions. I mean, you know, we don't do magazines and springs and polymer, um, but, uh, and we're having, we're having some molds built outside for some, you know, some new projects that we're bringing to the table, but, you know, various components, but the majority of the manufacturing that we do here. And then the little pistols you've got, you're making those here as well? Yeah, yeah. The, the protector, the fully machined upper um, slide and lower receiver, and even the grips on that because the grips are machined aluminum and you know, all the triggers and hammers and pins and what have you. Don't do the springs in the magazine on that one, but everything else we do in-house. Cool. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's been an interesting ride. You know, when we first bought the company, it was several months before the, you know, the Obama craze kicked in you know, after, the, after the election in 2009. And it was, uh, it was, you know, it's been a roller coaster. You know, that first year, year you know, things half. got crazy, right? Right, when oh, yeah. it took over, it, the it got crazy, and then it slowed down because, you know, the first the first six months of uh, after the election, we were shipping in a year what the what Gary had done in a month. Wow, I mean, it was up just dramatically. And then summer came along, and which is traditionally a slow time in the industry, and and um, you know, people had lost the fear that Obama was going to take away their right to buy a weapon and the distributors, which are who we sell primarily to, you know, they were overstocked, and so it had a big slowdown, and then it came back strong late in 2009, and it's been very consistent since then. So it's been it's been a really good business, and you know, and, and personally, it's a lot of fun because you know having you know having a shop full of manufacturing equipment gives us a lot of flexibility when it comes to designing new weapons and and you know trying out new versions and prototypes because you know we do everything in house. Um, but it's uh, it's been a it's been a it's been a very enjoyable venture, and and you know so we're you know we're one of the things that we recognize with our product line is that you know we you know when, as is the case probably with most firearms manufacturers you constantly need to bring out new weapons new designs new features you know to keep the products from becoming stale. You know, Taste change, like you say, the big tinny rails. Oh yeah, wouldn't have needed those twenty years ago. Now I'm sure everybody wants them. Absolutely, and so you know that's that's one thing that we're <clears throat> that we're constantly doing is making design enhancements to the weapons. I mean, whether it be um, you know, like right now we're 
Um, you know, last year we we put adjustable front sights on our weapons. When you know previously it was a fabricated sight, you know, non adjustable, and then a, and a fully automatic weapon that was fine. But semi automatic, where you know the end user is a little more focused on the accuracy and need a little bit of adjustment. And then this year we are uh, we are adding adjustable rear sights. So you've got you know, adjustable front and rear sights on all the weapons now. Um, you know, we changed the mag cache design on it. We changed the safety selector design just to kind of give it a little more updated look. Uh, we came out with the 57 by 28. Yeah, that's um, a cool one. Yeah, the 57 SST series, which has I mean been very well received out there in the market. I mean, it's been a it's been a great weapon. Probably one of our top sellers this year. That in the in the five inch pistol, and we have it in a 16 inch carbine. We have it in an eight inch pistol, and also a, a 10 inch SBR, mm. which you know, the, for whatever reason, SBR seem to be doing really well right now, yeah. and pretty hot segment of the market. So that's been a good. Know, a good section for us, and so you know. Beyond that, we we're coming out with a uh, with a new sporting slash assault rifle uh, that's kind of a hybrid between a Mac and an AR. You know, it'll have a fabricated upper and lower receiver, and be chambered in uh, five five six. Uh, we'll also do one on three hundred blackout, hmm. uh, but it'll be sixteen and a quarter inch barrel, and it'll have a, a side folding and adjustable collapsible stock. Um, take standard AR fifteen mags, and uh, it'll have you know it'll be you know considering we're going to make everything other than the magazines and some of the other springs you do everything in house we'll have a lot of flexibility on you know on the design and it's going to be a, a seriously upgraded weapon um should be out we're going to introduce it at shot show be production ready probably the first second week of january that's what this is going to be it's going to be a piston a short stroke piston driven uh five five six lock bolt Design weapon uh, had a lot of an upgraded handguard and, like I said, the side folder stock and a few other nice little features on it. But um, that's going to be uh, that's you know that's going to kind of open up a lot of different areas for our, our products because you know with the you know with the Mac configuration we were stuck with the design that allowed you know the magazine to go through the you know, the grip the mag housing you know so you're not going to get a 223 going through the grip you know because it just makes the grip tube. Too large to you know comfortably hold when you're shooting a weapon, but um, you know this uh, lock bolt design is you know going to open up a lot of different calibers. You know, 223, 5.56, um, uh, the 300 blackout, 308, and some of the other specialty calibers we'll consider as time goes by. And nice to hear that all the parts and everything from distribution. I'm sure the materials, everything's you know staying in the U.S. Oh yeah, and, and in the case of this weapon right here, uh, as compared to a lot of AR-15 manufacturers, you know, they're buying components and assembling the weapon. And right. you know, with you know with our manufacturing capabilities, um, if you look at that weapon right there, I mean obviously the the, the polymer pistol grip in the magazine, uh, that little angle foregrip that we have on this model right here, are will be purchase items. But if you look at the uh, the stock and the sock tube and the upper and lower receiver and the handguard and the barrel and the bolt and bolt carrier and um, you know do, being able to manufacture that, all that internally really helps us uh, from a cost standpoint because you know we're making it in-house and from a quality control uh, consideration just you know being able to control all the manufacturing and tolerances in-house for you know for the quality and performance of the weapon is a big plus. It looks like uh, with that configuration too without having some recoil spring in the back are you going to be able to offer a pistol version of this? Uh, absolutely. Uh, awesome. That one will be a sod folder, so the stock will um, that will it'll be a standard feature of that weapon. And going into a pistol configuration is going to be one of the ones that will probably come out with mid year. Awesome. Is the the buffer or the, the where the buffer tube would normally be? Is that a mil spec size so that the end user could replace it with say some other absolutely F yeah stock? yeah the um, um, the female threaded adapter that's on the side folder mechanism is an inch and three sixteen sixteen okay. thread. So it'll take, you know, if somebody has a magpole or right. Voltor or any other sock that they want to replace on the, on that. And the same with the pistol grip as well. That's correct. Yeah. Well, that's that's all great. Yeah. Yeah, so it still you know still offers a lot of the flexibility that you know that has been part of the reason for the high popularity of the AR. You know, everybody loves to put their own little special twist to their own gun. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, it's going to... So I mean, we're very excited about it. I mean, the, the initial response that we had on the first press release and from our distributors and, and our rep groups has been extremely strong. And so we'll be, you know, we'll with the weapon 
with the features you see there and a, and a short stroke piston is going to be consistent with some of the other ARs that are just a basic low end design cost. You know, so we think it's going to have a pretty, a pretty nice impact on the market. Awesome. So we have something to look forward to at shot then. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and then in addition to that, you know, we uh, back a year ago we started with um, with a, a line of suppressors. Uh, we started with the most basic version, which is a 22. We did it in a full auto version, which is a stainless, and then it's the standard, which is a 7071 um, cave apple design. And it's evolved now into a 5.56, uh, a 308, 300 blackout, uh, 9mm, 45 ACP version. And all those will be uh, shown at Shasha this year. Awesome. So it's been, um, you know, the, the 22 uh, design was pretty straightforward, uh, not quite as demanding as some of the other. Uh, calibers out there, and so we uh, we teamed up with some um, uh, well-educated uh, suppressor engineers uh, that have helped us really perfect these designs. Um, and it's because it's, it's it's, I mean the you know the the line between success and failure in a suppressor, as far as having one that performs well with with very good decibel reduction and has some you know high reliability and and. And no failure is, I mean, it's a challenge. And sure. um, so, you know, we utilize our own expertise we have in-house and brought in some experts from outside and have been able to come up with a design we feel very comfortable with. Awesome. You know, well, suppressors are definitely becoming more and more popular as people figure out that there's not much to get in one except a little bit extra paperwork and two Oh, yeah. Jobs, you know? Yeah, and, and I think the stigma of a suppressor has changed over the years, you know. A number of years ago, you mentioned a silencer or a suppressor to somebody that's not within the firearms industry. and. Yeah, you know, you, you, yeah, they think, well, what do you need a suppressor for? And I think that, you know, that's really changed a lot because, you know, the, I mean, the, the reason for suppressor, obviously, is to minimize the damage to, you know, to the shooter's hearing, which is very important, you know, and, you know, if you're shooting, you're shooting your weapons a lot and, 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 you know, the comfort and the ability to shoot the weapon without hearing protection is a big plus. You know, it's good for the family and the neighbors and, exactly. and the shooter as well, so. Yeah, it makes everybody happy. Makes everybody happy, <laughs> yeah. And it's always good to hear there's more coming out because obviously you know the more op more options everybody has the better. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a and it's a good market. I mean the you know the manufacturers for the most part get along well. Um, you know the, it's a uh, it is definitely a growing segment of the firearms business. And um, but yeah, it's, it's you know it's just another enhancement to our product line. And you know we um, you know we've we've really enjoyed you know this um, uh, this. I guess this journey through the you know, the industry that's been over the past four years, and me personally, I absolutely love it. I mean, it, it consumes all of my personal time as far as you know, shooting and test firing new weapons and coming up with new designs and meet with our design engineers and you know all the what ifs and the different options and configurations that we can look at. I mean, it's 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 very enjoyable and. Um, you know, so and and you know the employees here at Masterpiece Arms and Engineering Cycle love it. I mean, they use their you know their they have their their hand and role in manufacturing you know a quality firearm, and they get to see the finished product going out the door. Uh, there's a lot of pride in the workmanship uh, that we have out in the shop, and I think it shows in the quality of the weapons that we produce. Awesome. Well, it's always good to hear somebody that's interested in firearms too, and it's not just a product or another product that's come out of the shop. Oh yeah, it's yeah it's it's not it's not just a it's not just another assembly. It's a, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of excitement and, and you know pride in the in the parts that we do here, and you know it's it's a definitely a team effort. That's for sure. Excellent. Well, we appreciate your time and giving us a little insight into them. Uh, we can take a look at the shop. Sure, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. We we do uh, machining of components that are typically made out of bar stock and cast and forging and flat stock. It's a good investment because these machines will last, you know, 15 to 20 years and properly maintained and, and you'll be pulling out quality parts all the time. Absolutely. The spec. Yeah. This is a 9mm barrel blank from one of our carbines. That's the guys in the shop signed it? Yeah, Barry, yeah, Barry's, he actually had everybody in the shop sign the uh, cover that has to do with manufacturing the product. <laughs> cool. Our, our shop is a TS16949 ISO 9000 oh, okay. shop. Okay. Yeah, so we we pay a company a lot of money to come in yeah, here and that verify a lot. that yeah. we have a, a functioning, very specific quality system that kind of controls how we run this business. Yeah, 
Yeah, so this is a uh, this is a Swiss turn CNC lathe. It's a nine axis machine. It does turning and milling, and it's got a main spindle, a sub spindle. But it, you know, but again, being able to do it in house is uh, is a big plus. Exactly. This is, this is how the receivers will come. This is how they start. A whole different series of welding operations. Uh, well, I think what he's doing right now is welding the side plate on. And so this is where you know, a lot of the assembly takes place on the adjustable front side, which we introduced last year, and that's the adjustable rear side. You know, these are just some of the, you know some of our weapons. We also manufacture these weapons for another firearms manufacturer. This is how it'll be shipped, just like that right there. Okay. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.